all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item B is the approval of the consent agenda. I was just wanting to make sure that we're covering the kind of the update on the um, historic preservation program from wherever you want to place that on the agenda is. is I guess it depends on the board's questions. I mean, I, I would certainly considering the majority of the issues with that are personnel related. Okay. For executive session. Okay, that'd be fine. So, okay, is there a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda as presented? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item number two, citizens' comments. Are there any citizens to be heard today? Any citizens? I know we have a special presentation, so that will be under new business then. Hearing none, we'll go on to item C, finance report. So included in your uh, financial packet would be the profit and loss and the balance sheet, um, which we know the, the profit and loss has not been accurate for most of the year because it's duplicating all of those. Um, we are still working with Blackbaud where they are anticipating um, everything should still be up and running for January. Um, so in there I also included the check details so you could see the checks that were uh, dispersed during the month of November and then this month I also had added in there a um, bank reconciliation report for the race checking and the ARPA checking um, and that gives a better breakdown if you are looking at the the race checking reconciliation report it shows that the checks and payments that had cleared in November were two hundred forty one thousand eighty four dollars and seventy cents uh, deposits and credits that were cleared were $280,020.93. Uh, it is still showing uncleared transactions for $88,907.42 um, as of November 30th. And those are just payments that had not cleared the account yet. And I think that gives a little bit better picture of expenses versus um, payments received than the profit and loss report that we have there. On the ARPA checking reconciliation report, again, it just shows that the um, payments cleared for the month of November were $206,072.35, uh, and uncleared as of November 30th were $66,969.22. Um, primarily, those are being paid to the historic grant uh, recipients, and uh, there were a few bill payments to other, um, like legal that we had to pay and the mortgage office, they split payment with, with the ARPA funding as well. A lot of information very quickly, so we'll give everybody a chance just to pause That's for a fine. moment and catch our breasts on that. So, you know, some of it was emailed out. I'm not. Any questions at this point from any, on the financials or? And I get. So I'm on a number of boards. So our fiscal year ends December 31st? Right? Yes. Okay. Fine. So will we be entirely up and running on Black Paw January, starting January 1st then, or is that a little bit later, do you think? So I realize I, that it takes a little time I, for the implementation, of course. They're telling us that it's supposed to be up and running for January 1st, but that's going to be for our testing mm -hmm. um, and intensive testing period. So we have to do that as much and as quickly as possible. All of our information is going to be new in that system starting then, though, okay. even if we aren't actually doing any transactions until maybe the middle of January as far as like dispersing checks and things like that. So Will you run a parallel system between the existing software and the new software then, do you think? or uh, Can you repeat that? Uh, running parallel systems that you'll, you'll 
use existing software, not also the new software. Right. And kind of test that for a month or yes. two. Yes, yes. Which I realize is a lot, double entry on everything, but it's for, it helps you to perfect the yes. procedure. Any other questions or observations? Hearing none, there's a motion to accept the uh, financial reports as presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item D is our executive director's reports, um, general updates and information. Mr. Stimpert. All right, thank you. Uh, one item of note, Tracy Davis has completed her diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging training uh, as of November. So that is a success and they continue to work on the other trainings provided under that, that service as far as HR uh, goes. Homes Within Reach Conference last week in Hershey, uh, myself, Jake Huff and Mike Lavery from Code Enforcement presented a session on Blight, the last line of Code Enforcement. Uh, felt like we had a very good attendance for the session, some good questions, uh, some, some decent networking with other individuals across the state redevelopment authorities and such that, that do a lot of and deal with a lot of the same things that we deal with. So um, like I said, good discussion, good questions at the end of it. So I, I think it went very well and we, we certainly all learned some from other sessions as well. Uh, as far as just an update on the authorities RACD grant, uh, we did submit an extension and did receive approval to extend that to November 30th of 2024. Still waiting to get on our consultant schedule to work with EMTA, figure out how we can close out section three, and then work on identifying a project to utilize the remaining portion of that funding and get a plan together as quickly as possible so we can get with OB and see what we can do about, you know, more than likely we're gonna have another extension, but it's uh, 621,218 dollars still remaining in that Union Square Rack P grant from 15 years ago <laughs> so and I'm sorry to do this to you but can you remind me again the you know what the initial intent was the initial project and how it may have morphed so the initial project for that was the acquisition and construction and development of the Union Square area the townhomes uh, part of it was acquisition of the Labor and Industry Building. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all kind of in, lumped into one big Union Square development project. And then when Fourth River had, the developer had his untimely death and then that whole project kind of went bankrupt and into foreclosure, everything kind of stopped. We pivoted a lot of the money into the McGarvey Building, uh, facade work, elevator work, and then EMTA came along and requested money for the parking garage. So we put money in toward the parking garage. There's a little bit of some, some issues there and that's what we've got to iron out as far as there was some mill certificates and other documentation that the state was still waiting from the contractor, but there's some litigation, I guess, involved with the contractor on the EMTA project. So that has never been completed. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So we're potentially an investor into the EMTA garage. Yes. 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 And the, the segment five, which is what EMTA has bailed on because they found other funding, uh, was the build out of the commercial space underneath the parking garage. Okay. And that was the grocery store that was anticipated, yes. right? Yeah, kind of was like the food hall model food hall. with a grocery store. I'm not quite sure. It, it, it has definitely changed at this point, but we haven't had conversations as far as that goes in, in over a year. Okay. So at this point, our $600,000 is going to be used for? We have to identify another project in the Union Square area. Okay. So I know there was back three, three or four years ago when uh, it was decided that we would go with the EMTA project. There was a couple other projects in the Union Square area that, that had reached out for use of the money. So we'll certainly see what's still available and what we might be able to utilize that money to leverage against. Okay. Yeah. But I think right now the, the short order is to clear up the remaining part of the segment three, see if there's any money due back from EMTA because of the, the, the 
paperwork that was never completed and I then see. move forward. So we'll try to recapture any funding that we have to, which that 621,000 might increase if that is the case that, that the state wants that money repaid. I see. Of course, we don't want to send money back to Harrisburg, so we need to find another project. Absolutely right. not. So, okay. do we have anything in mind? Anything at level? Or? No, nothing. This all—it uh, was about the end of October when EMTA notified me that they were going to cease moving forward with this. So, we really haven't identified a, a project. Like I said, I've been waiting to get uh, a call on, in with our consultant. Our, our consultant who started this, Bob Ayub, has retired, and has appointed another person to his his consultant so we're we're waiting to meet with him okay and we've been doing this for 10 years right it's been over 10 years okay. i know that all right i figure we got to have the award for the longest running rackby grant i i i, I, I sort of so. think that okay <laughs> well pre and pre thanks for the summary again things when i don't when we don't hear everything every day we things fall out of our heads a little bit and yeah, I can certainly get the board a little a better okay. summary as far as what the money's been used for and the timeline. Um, okay. It's just, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of information to compile, a lot of files to go through. Yeah, Okay, so hopefully a good project will come forward that we can invest in that, that qualifies. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So that's my report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Snippert? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Sundberg. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. sure that, uh, um, that that we have in place a process that we're not waiting on decisions um, so um, we we looked at what the procedure and the protocol that we have been going through in the past and what that was is that we would file the, we'd file the condemnation action and um, see what type of a response there was, see if the property owner wanted to have a board of view appointed. If not, we didn't initiate that. We went to the valuation mm -hmm. hearing because we're happy with what our valuation was. We're finding out that the court doesn't want to make that decision, as you can see from the report. Uh, we're waiting on 30-plus of them. So what, looking back over the statute and getting, uh, getting some feedback from Aaron and, and his staff is that we'll file the condemnation action. If there's no response, we're gonna ask for a board of view. The county pays for that. There's board of viewers that are set each year and they're sitting there waiting to be summoned. I'm gonna start summoning them in and, and get them to, Get together, review everything, have a mini hearing. Mm -hmm. If if that if if we agree with that their decision, or if they agree with our valuation, then we're just going to ask for a rubber stamp approval of the court instead of having a valuation hearing. Which, in effect, what we were doing is we were giving the the property owners or the homeowners a couple of bites at the apple. Yeah, that's, that's right. really what what we were doing. Again, we're taking people's property, so we're cognizant of. But we're going to force we're going to force the hand, knowing that um, um, the court didn't want to make that. Decision. That's fine. Um, so we roundtabled that. So we're we're putting together a plan and a format going forward in 2024, where we can expedite these things, keep the feet uh, close to the fire, instead of having to wait for an extended period of time for. Uh, for decisions, uh, so that's that's what we roundtabled. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a good we're in a good place. My concern was is that we don't want to run up more costs and expenses here. Why would we ask for a board of view? But it's a county 
it, it, it's a it's a county expense. Now they may, in June or July of next year, go emailing me about Sunberg. What are you What are you doing? There's 15 board of views scheduled in June and July. Well, yeah, that's that's where we are. So uh, that's the process because we're we're waiting on a, a number of these, which quite frankly should have been over and done with mm -hmm. long ago. It is what it is, and, and we're able to, to um, you know, to adjust to it. So that's what we're doing. Well, I certainly appreciate your efforts and moving things ahead, and your leadership. I, you can't be sitting around. I mean, we're not getting any younger. So let's, we are. Uh, we are. We are not. And I keep. I keep. <laughs> I keep saying. I, mean, I keep saying these. These properties are not like a fine wine. They are not getting better with time. Does not get better. And, does not help our neighborhoods, no, and does, no. does not help help it, our communities. So. Right. We have an affirmative obligation to push these forward for the neighbors and and, and our in our community and it, it's our city so when i when i uh, and, and aaron's tired of hearing me say it, it is that i'll be contacted for example an out-of-town bank or an out-of-town owner and i'm saying look this is my city you're you're letting this property get in this bad shape in my town you're in seattle you're in massachusetts or wherever um so I'm, I'm pushing this forward. So come on down to Erie. It's beautiful in January and February and meet with us and we'll take a look at the, we'll take a look at the property. And that's usually when they'll say, hey, Gene, what can we do to resolve this? All right, let's well. talk. We've, we've been waiting for you for five years. So thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Anything else for our solicitor? All right, thank you so much. On to unfinished and new business. Item number one is the operating budget for calendar year 2024. All right, so I had emailed this out earlier last week. Hopefully you all had a chance to look at it and, and certainly pull out anything you would like uh, further clarification on, but I guess uh, I'll walk through a little bit. April can talk about some of it and then uh, certainly entertain any questions you may have. So uh, right on page one, I just kind of wanted to outline for the board what our open contracts as far as grant funds and agreements are. Uh, currently, right now, uh, we're sitting at $17,914,610 in open contracts, grants, and other such uh, allocations from multiple different sources uh, across, you know, basically the county as far as housing funding goes. Uh, and then, you know, we, we drop into, you know, the revenue from 2023 and then the proposed or anticipated revenue going into 2024. And, and as you can see, we just kind of, you know, kept things consistent looking at, at what grants we have, what grants we look to work through next year, fully expend, or, or a partial allocation of those funds moving into 2024. Based off our, our current capacity with, with a hope for some, some increased capacity as, as we, we get more contractors on board and we can, we can allocate more money. Uh, certainly, I think you can see, I think it's page three, bottom of page three, top of page four, uh, rehabilitation is our, our biggest dent into our, our operating budget at $2.1 million of funding goes out to residents for rehabilitation of their properties. And, and I sent out, I think on Tuesday, kind of a comparison of, of what the board used to see as far as an operating budget and comparison to what was is presented uh, this year. So we're, we're looking at a a, a estimated operating budget of a little over $4 million next year, given that right now, year to date, we're at about a 2.8. We'll probably round out at just under three uh, by the end of this year. And really just to highlight a couple of the, the big, biggest changes would be one under the rehabilitation, you know, $400,000 in the East Bayfront Greenway Trail project. You know, certainly we look to make that project shovel ready in early 2024 get some some initial phases of that project moving so there's there's an allocation there along with the healthy homes program almost double in funding under that program so th and then going back i think it's page three certainly condemnations and demolitions is another big hit to the budget as far as cost there because we, we really during 2023 the expenditures out of demolition funds of, of the blight mitigation were, were minimal. We utilized a lot of the land bank and uh, the Act 152 funding for 2023 demolitions. 
So I guess I will stop there. April, if there's anything you want to add, or board, if there's any questions. Good question with respect to there's a group of um, expenses on page one that don't have a 2024 budget allocated to them, starting with, um, <coughs> you know, it's various lead programs, I think, of light remediation. Are those a group of programs that got re Are those somewhere else? We, uh, on the, the revenue section on page one? Yes. Okay, so a lot of like toward the bottom there where there's 2023, uh, the home program services, that's a fee for service program with the city of Erie. Certainly there, there's some projects there, but there's, it's, I, I didn't want to bank on anything okay. that was, was unknown. And a lot of the other ones are, are really a lot of fee for service type work that, which, that comes and goes. Which may or may not materialize. Yeah, uh, mortgage satisfactions, we, we don't know who's gonna satisfy a mortgage early and have to pay us back. So there, there's, I, I don't, I didn't feel comfortable anticipating anything because there's, there's just a lot of unknowns. And then uh, National Center for Healthy Housing, that was a grant. Uh, FAIR was the completion of a grant from the mm -hmm. land bank. And of course, property sales is another one that just, you know, we, we don't really generate any revenue off of property sales. It's mostly in and then back up to the city for recoup of uh, CDBG funds. Right. It was just blank. I just wanted yeah, to make sure no, it was I enough. Do we anticipate any additional employees under payroll expenses? I do not have any anticipation okay. for new employees. Right. So the increases are salary adjustments and so on? Okay. Yes, so the increase that you would see for anticipated 2024 includes the, the two new hires that we've had um, and not anticipating any additional for next year. And also the increased um, health insurance costs that was just renewed for December 1st. All right. And I didn't see the board expense listed anywhere. You know. No, the board didn't, it didn't vote to increase your <laughs> salaries for this year. Christmas party, anything? Come on. <laughs> we got a Christmas card, which I'm grateful for. <laughs> So serious sometimes. <laughs> Other members have questions or, or observations? I'm assuming we're looking for a motion to accept the spending plan for next year. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that would be correct. All right. Is there a motion to accept the budget as presented? So moved. Is there a second? second? second. Thank you. All's in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're on to loan programs, item number two. Uh, I see that we have a new production uh, and a, we have a presentation on Ironworks Square. Is that Ms. Benjean or Mr. Groner? Yes. We don't get visitors often, so this is kind of exciting for us. No, no. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> like we're, <laughs> we're flattered, I guess. <laughs> So I think most of you have been briefed, but I think I have enough. Give it to the board first. Have you um, briefed them at all? We, I saw those online. So. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. So they have some letters of that. Okay. So you have in front of you is the uh, design concept for the former Erie Malleable Iron, which was at uh, 12th and Cherry Street. Mm -hmm. So we started that project back in early 2020. So I heard you talk earlier about blight. And um, so while you tackle the housing, we're trying to tackle the industrial blight mm -hmm. and this might be, other than one or two other properties, one of the biggest eyesores along uh, the city's main corridor of 12th Street. So thanks to the help from the city, um, we were able to purchase this property in 2020 for $375,000, which I like to say is 375 too much. <laughs> um, 
fact, Chris and I walked into it and we looked at each other and thought, oh my, what have we done? Um, but after um, two and a half years, uh, we finished demolition this summer and uh, it looks pretty good considering. So we are now on to what is um, going to be Ironworks Square, which is the renovation portion. So what you have in front of you is the uh, concept design for the exterior and the interior, which will be um, 80, approximately 80,000 square feet of new space. So the original building, um, before it was torn down, was actually 200,000 square feet. So we've reduced it down now to what will be about 80,000 square feet of leasable space. And then on the what is now the vacant side will be new buildings. And all toll, it will be about 150 to 60,000. So it'll be less leasable space, but it'll be attractive, usable space versus, you know, a decaying building. So uh, we've done all of this with the support um, really led by the city and its partners. So one of the very first grants we got was from the land, city land bank to help us take down the bridge. So thank you, Aaron, and those of you that are on the land bank. Um, so that was crumbling into the city, so that was the first thing we had to tackle. Uh, then the city ARP grant, a county ARP grant, and a number of other grants helped us begin the demolition. So several million dollars into it, it's down. We're now in the uh, rebuilding phase. We've acquired about $18 million in grants and loans to date. Uh, two state RACPs. I heard you mention a RACP. Mm -hmm. I hope ours don't take 10 years to <laughs> use. Um, a federal appropriation, an Appalachian Regional Commission grant, a CBDG grant, all sorts of things. Two loans um, got us up over $18 million. So the whole project's gonna be around $22 million. So we have a gap, which is why we're here today. So we are hopeful that you will consider this um, loan request to help us get, uh, get us where we need to be so that we can finish this job. We have several grants pending in addition to what we've already secured. So we are confident that we will get where we need to go and be able to pay you back in short order. But um, this will help us get going immediately and not delay this project any further. So that is a really reduced version of the long uh, process we've been through. I'm happy to answer any questions or Chris can answer the very technical questions on money. Questions? None? What took us so long? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had an opportunity to read all of it over, and I just think it's, um, it's a great incentive on our part uh, to begin to work on that section. As you already stated, it's a main corridor and um, an eyesore. Um, but more importantly, it's not getting any value back to the city at all. So um, thank you for moving forward. Well, thank you. If, if we're able to do this, it's an opportunity for you and us both to, it's a win-win, we think. So. so a question more for, I think, Aaron at this point. So we're going to use funds that were in our ARP bucket to loan. Is that what we're doing? So we're, this, this would or is be. Or this a shoebox somewhere or right, something? Right, this would be, yeah. <laughs> I keep it in my desk drawer. In, uh, so this would be five million of the six point eight million in revenue right. replacement funds that okay. the city had given to us under agreement for our loan programs. Uh, Chris and I had, had some discussions, and you know, we I kind of uh, agree that five million would be the best for the authority. It still leaves us one point eight to roll out some of the other loan programs that we have invested so much in, and are just about ready to roll out, but it still provides some of the financial need that the, the county RDA needs to, to get this project mm -hmm. moving forward. Uh, you know, it's a 4% fix, so it certainly is right in line with where we were at with some of our other loan program interest, and, it's, and then it gets us money on the street while we get those other programs up and running, and it will allow us to evaluate what the need is, and then as that money comes back in, we can 
have those programs ready to Absolutely. be up to full speed. So this is out of a, a bucket that's already approved for low, low, uh, yeah, it, approve it's out of a bucket that's already approved for loans. It's out of a, a bank account that the money has already been sitting in for, for just about a year. Okay. So we, we have the funding to, to move on it as soon as we can get under an agreement. And not to split hairs, but um, was it's okay to use it for commercial uh, it's loan as opposed to residential? So just all of our loans have to be commercial. They all have to so okay. that, that So and then, you know, I'll, I'll push it up to the city to get their approval, but this conversation started with a room full of officials from the city, so. Just want to make sure that we, we weren't taking housing dollars in, in favor of commercial dollars and, you know. Right, and I, th I think the difference, this, this money's going to come back to the authority. Okay. It just, it, it gets it out doing something instead of sitting in our bank account, and it allows the authority to generate some revenue off of it, which was okay. the, the main intent of the money all along. Because I've liked the messaging between the two organizations. In fact, that the, that the Erie County Redevelopment Authority is really commercial, you know, commercially based and so on. The Erie City Redevelopment Authority is very much, you know, housing and so on. It helps. Uh, our citizens understand the roles of the two organizations then and so I'm right. just you know messaging I know that our, our colleague who couldn't be here today with had some messaging on you know our on where the sign is and you know our a little credit you know it doesn't hurt yeah I think you know at this point if we were to roll out the first two programs that we have ready to go for the loans this money would still sit in a bank account and, and you know okay. it, it, it it's going to serve the community better being involved in a project as pro high profile as this project is while we work on getting this stuff up and running yeah. and then by the time we're ready it'll be back in our our coffers and ready to go out to the community in the neighborhoods all right you know, again i just want to make sure that we're still rolling out the residential ones and you know and along with if we can do both that's, that's perfect that's yeah there, there's there, I, have, I have no intent to stop any movement on those okay. we'll, we'll just allocate the 1.8 million dollars that we have for neighborhood based programs and then like i said as it comes back in we'll we'll just continue to put those that money back in those buckets okay. i know you like you said you alluded to ethan provided some some input as far as his recommendations uh you know given that he spends a lot of time in that realm as well you know certainly Make sure the board read that and takes those into consideration. All right. Is there any further questions for Ms. Minjean or Mr. Snippert or Mr. Groner? I know we're looking for a res motion to accept the res. This is not a resolution, but it's it's the program itself. Uh, I guess. A motion to move forward with the I guess a motion to move forward with the, the negotiation of, of an agreement between. City Redevelopment Authority and the County Redevelopment Authority for a loan of, of five million, I think. So Aaron, if you would yeah, go ahead, Chris. To help clarify, I think what we would, what would be helpful is the structure that I provided um, is the starting point. If that's a structure that you're comfortable with, then you're basically agreeing to approve the loan under those terms, and then I would work with Aaron on the actual commitment letter. Mm -hmm. And then our, our councils would then uh, work together on closing documents. So uh, just from my experience, typically what I do is I provide that structure which you have and, and you can either say yay or nay to that or you can make a tweak. Um, and so that's, okay. and, and, and Aaron, you and I would work off of, of, off of, this. of the term accommodation that I have there. Okay, so I guess it's $5 million at a 4% fixed, two years, interest only payments after 12 months, interest in principal balance payments in full after 24 months. Which like I said, I'll, you know, so Aaron, Ethan's Aaron only Aaron recommendations hears. were monthly payments starting in 12 min months of initial disbursement. Additionally, I would comment the letter of resolution would be more specific to a full balance of the loan is due and payable at maturity 24 months. And we Which I, I think that and we expect closing to be February, March of 2024? I believe so. I think it would be four to six weeks just to oh, get okay. everything scheduled. But uh, here, here's where, uh, I mean, we would want to make sure we agree on the structure of the interest payments, for example. If we want to tweak that, I think we'd want to do that now. Right. Or if we want to keep it, you know, uh, two annual payments. The reason I made it that way is it seems simpler just to have one payment at the end of each year but if you wanted it to be different as one of your board members suggested now would be the time to approve it 
with that language so that we can then move forward towards closing. Okay, so, so I guess just so the, this is structured that we would get a $200,000 payment after one year and then a $200,000 payment at the end of the second year along with the repayment of the full $5 million, right? Okay. We also talked about if we do see reimbursements come in, our payment requests come in before the two-year period that we would, so if we have a, a, a million flow in from one of the RACBs that that would be paid towards the note, that's still our intent too. Is there is a good chance that we would see this some of this come back before 24 months but we wanted to be safe and give us enough time so there there could very well be one of the federal grants or a, a appropriation that we see some of this flow back we will not just the interest but then also pay down on the principal before 24 months or or it can be left this way chris are you anticipating that this loan in the county the city loan and the county redevelopment loan would be shared in yes. some collateral position, which would be second. First. First. Well, there, there, right now there are no other. Uh, so there's no creditors. bank, no bank financing at this point. No. Now there may later on be the need for a small credit line, um, utilizing these funds along with city enterprise zone and county funds eliminates most of the need for either a bond issue or a line of credit. Um, but in the loan agreement, we would have to be able to subordinate to a possible credit facility later, which I think I put that language in there. Hopefully I remember to. But right now you would be first, shared first. And our hope is we can get through those 24 months without needing to find another bridge. Not that we want the property. That's Tina's baby. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you may, not like, you may not like the answer. That you can keep the property. <laughs> no, no. No, maybe at the end. Ordinarily, people are happy when they're in first. You That's probably it. aren't. But. Well, uh, maybe are there spots for redevelopment authority offices in this lovely new, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for us to, to move on up. Um, I'm okay with it. I might ask, and according to Ethan's note to the board, I might ask that he be our lead in reviewing any other conditions or whatever. This is really in his wheelhouse, and he's not here, so I want to make, want to make sure that we're engaging our colleague um, back in here to... Um, but I, I do think it, it, we, we want to get the, the um, uh, intervals uh, agreed on now, because otherwise I think you'd have to re-vote on it again. So whatever the accommodation that we think is right, we would want to, uh, whether it's annual or quarterly or monthly. Well, I mean, I don't see a problem with the annual. We know that your money's reimbursement money, so it's not yeah. like you've got a tenant in there paying rent every month. So right. I don't know why we would, since we don't have any particular need for the money. Yeah, because we're not, because uh, if we did, a year or 100 every six months or 106 months I mean, isn't enough to really launch to any you know any program per, per se yeah no no and I, I, that was like Chris yeah. alluded to the, the only recommendation I would have is that you know in 14 months they get a million dollars from from a grant that, that that would be repaid to the authority because looking 14 months down the road we might need that money to support some some loan applications under some of the other programs so I mean I think that would be about my only recommendation. And, and really, we would like it that way, too. This is not meant to be a long-term credit facility. We want to put this out as quickly as we can as well. So right. if, those flow, if those funds flow back, we want to get this short-term note paid off, and then we move on. So. All right. So the motion, if I remember correctly, is to accept, to accept this um, uh, loan fund agreement and we'll allow the, the team to work out the details and will we have a ch will be a check-in point before closing or or this is it do we get to see anything before we close or well, well certainly I, I mean I was just saying I can yeah share. typically you 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 vote on the accommodation that's presented and if you're comfortable with that then it's then it's entrusted with your council and and then we work through the closing so that accommodation would then be given, and then the closing documents would represent would would reflect the uh, the accommodation that you approved. Okay, appreciate that. All right, sir. Such motion. 
So moved. All right. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. We don't. I, I don't personally loan five million dollars every day, so I get you know, <laughs> get in the weeds a little bit here. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Who was the second? I was. Okay. okay perfect. And then item B, loan program interest rates. All right. So the last, lastly, is uh, our study session a couple months ago. We, we discussed some of the loan programs. Given new production loan program was going to be the first uh, program that we would roll out. Just wanted to make some adjustments to the percentage rates of those loans, uh, just given the, the current market conditions and some of the, the starting points at which we had those was a little bit low. Uh, so I, I provided an updated uh, term sheet for the new production loan program for the board's review and approval. That was nonprofit at three percent construction uh, interest only, and then for profit at five percent interest only. It was up from one and three respectively. Okay. And if we approve this, how quickly does this uh, program become available to a developer? Because I have a developer who calls me every week. <laughs> <laughs> that. Did it. Uh, hopefully, around the, the first part, middle of January, Blackbot is kind of consumed a lot of the financial right. staff's time. Staff's time. Uh, so hopefully early in 2024, the program will be up and running and that, that developer who keeps calling you doesn't want a loan, so. I see, he wants grants, but. Wants a grant money, so. Yeah, that's the best we can do. So, all right. So move. Did I hear a motion to approve? You did. did do I hear a second? second. I'm not hearing a second just yet. Oh, I thought I said second. Oh, I thought second. you got it. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll adjourn into executive session then cover the a couple items that we had discussed earlier. All right, motion to adjourn.